Hello, I'm Atsubo Judge. Now I want to thank you specially for your message of love, your kind words, your prayers that you sent in for to celebrate my wife's birthday yesterday. And I pray specifically that God will bless you. He will renew your strength. He will keep a watch over your life and your destiny. I declare that you will never lack celebration in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are really grateful. We are really grateful. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Praise God. Now then, we are... Let's call for our daily bread. Praise God. Are you ready? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this with me right now. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, when we pray this prayer, it's not just words we are speaking. Your mind must be set on it. I've got daily bread to receive from God today. So when you encounter your first challenge, let that be what it will bring out from you. Where is my daily bread? Where you, you, you don't say, I don't, I don't know what to do today. I don't know what to Don't ever say you don't know what to do today. You know why? Because the answer is right there with you. But it's part of what we're talking about. What light are you walking? What light are you walking? He said in him was life. And the life was the light of men. Okay. So now... I'm broke and I don't have any money on me. What do I do? Was there any time Jesus was broke? Yes. He said, when? How can Jesus be broke? Oh, yes, there was. One time Jesus was in the house and he was in the house with Peter. And I guess that was, must have been Peter's house. Praise God. So, yeah, I can tell you why I believe it was in Peter's house. So tax collectors came to the house and they knocked. And Jesus saw them. He said, what do you want? He said, oh, we are tax collectors. And Jesus asked Peter a question. Who's supposed to pay tax? Citizens or foreigners? And Peter said, foreigners. And Jesus said, okay, that means we're free. Peter said, yeah, we're free. And Jesus said, you know what, Peter? Let's not offend them. Okay, so what do you want me to do? Let's give them some money. <laughs> but there's no money. It's not a problem. Take your hook. See? If he was in Jesus' house, he wouldn't have told him, take your hook. Because they were in his house and Peter used to be a fisherman. He said, take your hook. Go to the sea. The first fish you catch, you will see coins in the mouth of that fish. Bring it and pay for boats of us. He didn't just say, bring it and pay for only me. He said, pay for both of us. Now, what I did, now that was the life that Jesus lived. And those things were written for a reason. See? They weren't just trying to select all the miracles Jesus did. Everything written was written for a purpose. It was one written for our learning. Question is, what do you learn from that? See that now? Now, that was a life Jesus lived. So there was no money, but he wasn't still stranded. So what do I learn from there? God can give me money anywhere I find myself, even if it would mean by a miracle. Now, Jesus did that so that we can have light to live. So I'm broke. What do I do? I remember light in the life of Jesus in that kind of a situation. And so what do I do? I create an expectation. I don't sit there and start telling myself, listen, at the end of this month, I had some good money. Why didn't I save? If I had saved, 
I would not be in this situation now. In fact, I think I know what made me not to save. It was my wife that made me to spend that money. Or it was my day. You, you begin to do all that. You are not walking in the light. You are not walking in the light. You know why you're doing that? The eyes of your heart have not been flooded with that light. So you're stranded indeed. But it's not supposed to be because that's not what God created us for. He sent these lights. That light was the life of Jesus. Now that's why he told us John was not that light. So you can't look at John and say, oh, I want to be like John. No, you will crash. You can't look at anyone else and say, wow, I, I wish I can be like this person. No, sir. If they have not kept the testimony till the end, listen to me. There, there are many, you know, I say this with all respect, but I think that that's the best way to describe it. There are many confused people in the body of Christ. Confused because they have not submitted their minds to the will and purpose of God. These things are not things you pick up carelessly. These things are things you, you focus on, you keep your mind on until the Spirit of God, and you say the Spirit of God has to be involved. I tell you this truth, there is no one that is hard to be flooded with light by just sitting down and reading books and listening to other people. No, there must be an encounter with the revealer of truth himself. There must be an encounter with, if, you see, you can't get this in any classroom. You can't get this from reading any book. No, read the books or every book in the world, you will not get this. And that's why you have many preachers today, men of letters, but little lights. So sometimes people find it difficult to, to talk about this light. Because we've not set our patterns, we've not set our mind. Look at the life of Jesus. And I just told, told you about one, one time he was broke. Think about it. Okay, there was this other time. He wanted to feed the crowd. Feed the crowd? How could you even think about that? No, I mean, how could you think about that and he asked his disciples hey it's Philip where are we going to get bread to feed all these people <laughs> and Philip looked at the crowd looked at him said sir I don't know what you're thinking of but man even if we use all the money we have to buy bread how far can it go say so, you know what let's feed them let's what do you know the logistics involved to feed these people even if we had the money, do you know the logistics involved? He said, what do you have? I said, a little guy just brought five loaves and two fishes. All right, that's good. Bring it. And he blessed it. Now, what you, I want you to see is the mindset of Jesus. The mindset of Jesus. Now remember the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. So the same thing, every principle is established. Same thing, every idea is established. If you say the same thing repeated two times or three times, it is established that this is the way to go. So you see Jesus in this situation. It would have been easy for Jesus to say, look, Peter, James, and John, come. Go down to the next village. As you step in, you will see the owner of a bread, of a bakery. Tell him, I need some bread to feed these people. And they will give it to you. And they go down there and they get the bread and supply to everyone. That would have been wonderful. The goodness of Jesus, the influence that Jesus had in people. I mean, somebody just heard he wanted bread. He just gave them, wow, wonderful. But he didn't go that route. Why? Because he knew every action of his was to produce 
light to men. And Jesus wasn't even coming to produce light by himself. He was coming to show us the light of the Father. He was coming to show us what the Father thinks in his heart. I'm telling you, there is no way you will claim to be walking with God and your life will be normal, explainable. And, and you understand what I'm talking about? There is no way. Listen, you, you know, you, you want to sit down and really ask yourself, do I really walk with God? How, how can you explain? Now, this is Jesus looking at 5,000 people or more that he could have easily told them, I bless you as you go home, receive strength until you get to your houses. Amen. And, and that would have been fine. Nobody would have abused him. Nobody would have been angry with him. But he looked at these people and he said, hey, I've got to feed these people. Now, he was just acting like his father are you following me? He was just acting like his father because that's not the first time that was taking place. He was acting like his father when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Let me tell you this truth. God could have easily passed these children by villages. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? And they get to those villages and he would have touched the heart of those people. They will hear that they are coming and those ones will prepare food all manner of food and just keep it by the roadside. Hey guys, I know you guys are passing. Don't enter, don't come and attack us. But hey, you can have all you want here. The same God who granted them favor in the sight of the Egyptians before they left Egypt. You think he couldn't have granted them favor in every village on that route? And then they will have food for days and they will eat and enjoy themselves and go to the next place. The next. They could have, he could have done that. But the God of all he, he, he is the most high. Praise God. He chose to feed them without bothering any soul. Because he's big enough, he can do it. So here's Jesus thinking like his father. He said, okay, how do I feed these people? Let's just get food down from heaven for them. Praise God. And he did. And you tell me today that he cannot supply you money from heaven? Come on now, come on, come on. We, we, we haven't believed enough. So, so you are here, you, you have this project and you're thinking, oh, my, my members are too small. They can't even, oh, let's leave this project. I don't think we can do it. Let's leave it. Come on now, come on now, come on now. You, you, you are there. It's time to pay school fees for your children. And then, Lord, who, who will God touch now? And that's all you think. You look at all the people around you. You tell yourself, I never have anybody that can give me this kind of money. So let's leave it. And your life is controlled by that. You, you are not walking with God. I'm telling you the truth. You are not walking with God. Because see, the light, the light that you are supposed to have, you have not received it yet. You haven't received it. I'm talking to you. The life you are supposed to have, you are still far from it. It's not because there is nobody to help you. It's not because you that, that thing is too big for you to handle. No, it's simply... Because if you are in that position and you really don't know what to do, it's simply because you haven't opened your heart to light yet. And you want to change that situation? It's not to change your location yet. It's not, you see, no, 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 it's not to change your location yet. The first thing you must do is to open your heart to his light. Now, when his light comes into you, it changes your mindset. And that's the first thing that must change. When your mindset changes, then direction will come. Jesus, first of all, had to accept in his heart that we can feed these people. And when he decided we can feed these people, then the question arose in his heart, what do we have? Because there was something there. And he said, okay, 
See, the same thing. He had to accept it in his heart. You know what? These people need money. Let's join this tax collector's scheme. Let's just give them some money. He accepted it in his heart. You know, many times I found out, and, and this is the truth, sometimes you can be arguing about something, maybe a bill, that, that, that you're de they are demanding a bill from you, a payment from you. You can be arguing and arguing and arguing and arguing. But hey, do you know the moment? And sometimes you are forced you are forced to pay that thing. And you now grumble and grumble. But you know the truth. The moment you set your heart to like, you know what? It's money. Let's pay it. Ability will just come and it's paid. But many times you choose to argue. There was a life that gave us light. Have you received that life? It's not just, I received the life of God in me. I received the life of God. What are you doing with the life of God? What do you mean I received the life of God? You, 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 you confess that thing. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, pay this bill. No, why? Why? Why must I pay this bill? No, no, no. And, and what's driving you in that argument is the amount of money you think you're going to lose paying for that thing or doing that thing. See that? It's your mind that has to change. And our time is up. I pray for you today. Listen, a change is taking place in your life. That's why it's called the spirit of prophecy. This is what the spirit of prophecy does. It propels you in the right direction. Your life is changing. The manner, the way you live is changing. Your approach to life is changing. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.